Welcome, everybody. So, the other day I was playing around with a cutoff material. So, this is a uh, an example that I found from someone else on YouTube that was showing you how to make a material um, uh, that would uh, disappear. So, if you wanted to have someone like dissolving, well, it's, it's not really a dissolve, it's more of a linear. Uh, uh, disappearance I'll uh, I'll put a link to that guy's video it was pretty cool but I took what he had done to create a uh, cutoff material function and I converted it into a uh, uh, I just modified it a little bit to add a noise uh, component to it and by doing that let me pull this up here by doing that I ended up with this really cool effect so um i'm gonna put a link to his video you can follow what he did and then you'll see exactly where i uh deviated from what he, what he was doing so originally he was using a sphere mask to uh mask off part of the material and instead of doing that what i did was i applied a noise node with a panner so this is uh there's a quite a few examples of this out on the uh out on youtube but uh go ahead and look this up you, you'll kind of see you mask off a couple things pass that into a panner coordinate etc append them together and feed them into the position of the noise so then if i preview this you'll see you get this uh this look here right um, then I feed that into a power uh, scaling and this allows me to control how much uh, waviness comes through um, and then I feed that into a lerp between um, black and whatever color that you want to I have an input parameter here into the function and by doing that, it uh, it will generate, and then I boost that value coming out of here. So this material function generates two outputs, an emissive color and an opacity. And when you use this function then, so here's my material function. Um, because of the way I deviated things, things like the radius, hardness, uh, don't really apply. I'm really only using the power fringe color and the boost. Um, you feed this in. Uh, this is a, uh, I'm actually using the parameter, again, oh, this position isn't used either because of the, the thing that I do with the noise. But feeding this in, I put a high metallic, no roughness, feed in a color, and um, what you end up with is this up here uh, which is just a really cool effect it's got the noise pattern but then it highlights with a fringe color uh, coming along here in my case I just did red white and blue uh, to be a little patriotic but I could also um, adjust I'll show you I created a, a blueprint that allows me to adjust let me get this out of the way down here so I created a blueprint which allows me to control the uh, the base color and the fringe color. So for example, instead of blue fringe color, I could change this to, let's say, green. And um, and now my fringe color is, is green, even though the, the base color is, um, even though the base color is, uh, is blue. So again, very cool. I like it quite a bit. It's a really neat effect. And um, overall, it's, it's, been, it's just been a lot of fun to play. One thing I forgot to mention was, if you look at the, uh, the shadows here. So for this object, you see that the shadows are being updated down below. Um, and these are coming from a spotlight, which is up above here. So, Yep, spotlight is uh, 
right over here and and you see that the the shadows are are being calculated in real time as the uh, opacity mask material is changing because of the uh, the panner and the noise the noise same thing with the middle one here the white one the shadows are being updated and calculated correctly here but if you look at this one the shadows are just baked they're static right now if I take this uh, this object let me grab this one there we go Whoop. Kind of hard to grab it. Yep. Okay, there you go. Now, if I move this, you'll see that the shadows update. I was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out what this was. It turns out that the only problem here, let me select this again. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Let me grab this. The only problem with this is that the object itself, let me grab it right here, nope, this one, the object is marked static. As soon as I switch this to movable, now you see that the shadows are getting updated. So anyway, that was just a quick tip. I got a little confused by that and someone helped me out. So I'm passing it along to you. Play with. The other thing is, let me show you. Oh yeah, one more thing. So in his exam, when you're messing with uh, the noise. So right here, if we look at the output from the noise, let's preview this. So you see that the, the white is, um, the white part is, if we want to flip the white and the black, you can send it through a one minus node. And then if we were to preview this, it flips it. So now the black becomes the white, the white becomes the black. And if I feed this into my, my core thing, so we'll apply that. Now you'll see a change up here after this recompiles. We'll see that um, now we're we're just presenting the uh, the smaller parts, which is, instead of being like the majority of it is black now the or the majority of it being white now the majority of it is black. So uh, again, very cool, neat effect. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will uh, I will uh, show you uh, post that video so you can go check it out for yourself. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is when you're doing your noise gradient here, the one thing to get it to look like this is I used a scale of 0 0.028 or somewhere down there, so you have an, a rough estimate. Uh, fast gradient texture uh, levels, I believe he dropped his down to like two or three. Uh, you can change it. I, I'd have to go research what this means and um, another important thing is the level scale so the default value for this is two and that gives you like a much let me put this back to normal so this this is definitely a uh, like a more noisier pattern so by dropping this down so if, you'll see if I go to 1.5 here you start to get a little bit more of the, the black coming through. If I change it down to one, you get even more. Um, you can also affect that by the min and max outputs. So right now it goes from one to negative one to one. So if I change this to zero, then I will end up getting a lot more um, of the white coming through the noise material. But since I'm doing the one minus X after the noise, that's why we see so look if i preview the noise here most of it is white and that's because my output values go from zero to one rather than uh, the bottom you know negative one to one so anyway really fun to play around with i learned some things and uh i hope you did too if you like 
what I am uh, doing here, please subscribe. And uh, as I learn, I pass this information along and uh, hopefully you can uh, be inspired and learn something yourself. So uh, take care. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.